Welcome to Enter the Vault. These are the chronicles of two fat nerds on a quest to do as little as possible. I'm Connor Christian. And I'm Dean Case. And it's with their lives, isn't it, Connor? Is it with their lives? Uh, well, we got like, what, six, seven episodes in of doing the intro and we've only fucked it up a few times. So I think that's good enough. Anyway. This, this is... Go on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a mess. This is Nightbirds by Saudace. fucking banger man what a great way to start this episode high energy we're fucking high energy we're buzzing let's do this shit man so that was Nightbirds by Saudace even though it's spelled like Saldade they're Italian so S-A-U-D-A-D-E if you're interested but it's pronounced Saudace sounds like a fucking dish tasty tasty dish it tastes like some tasty like paella type of thing yeah 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 like Like some peasant food it's peasant food (laughs) right that's not that's not for the uh, higher echelons (laughs) It's just because it's soulful, man. It's real tasty mm, shit. Mm, mm. And it's kind of heavy as well. It like really weighs you down. Like jerk chicken. Yeah. yeah. Mm, damn. I'm hungry now. Yeah. <laughs> right. So we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> we're going <laughs> gonna to get some eats and we'll be back. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're, we're fat enough. We don't we, need any more. we got some stuff to talk about this week. We do. First of all, I'm going to just say that Adobe... <laughs> Adobe is shit. <laughs> they fucked me off something proper <laughs> because um we just spent what half an hour i think trying half to get an hour a solid half an hour just trying to open up the fucking audio software the audio editing software just to record this fucking podcast we were this close to doing it on audacity not that there's anything <laughs> wrong with audacity it's good for recording shit for editing and we cannot be fucked with doing it on audacity <laughs> nah basically uh, if it's we use audition and if it's all in there then it's just simple to just chop it up and go but but done so we can rush it out there yeah. without any care oh, or no. attention yeah but adobe want to fucking put as many hurdles in between uh the user and the program as possible like what is with that fucking i don't know it just like has uh like a integrated app manager thing called create well not the creative clouds where you get all the apps but then it asks you to download a fucking app manager as well and to update and oh, i just can't be fucking arsed with it fuck you adobe man so yeah um that's that out the way that little rant adobe yeah. the head of adobe <laughs> if you're listening <laughs> somehow I'll, po- I'll post this on the adobe forums and see how fast it takes us to get a lawsuit uh probably pretty quickly i think adobe <laughs> have got some serious money behind them i don't think we're really a force to be reckoned with 
by that I mean we're like, yeah. there's no point reckoning with us because we got nothing. We got nothing. It would just be like brushing a fly off your arm. <laughs> to probably about a sip. Actually, that's probably more of an effort. We've got our like one listener. Yeah, we do, man. Shouts to Alien AM who commented on the YouTube and made us feel loved. Made us feel loved. And, and uh, no, yeah, it's pretty much just Alien. Is, is, well, it, I don't know if Alien is the same person as Pura Milk. It might be. Like, it could they be. both seem very jokey, but Pura pure Milk and Alien. Is it M8? Like Alien Mate? I think it is AM. Oh, AM. Alien AM. 8M. Oh, 8M. Yeah. A- alien ate them. Yeah, I guess. I like, guess then, yeah. Like yeah. Alien, ate fa- uh, alien ate farm, Alien Ant farm. Oh right, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I almost went, I almost saw Alien Ant Farm. Wow, what a riveting tale! Yeah, what a riveting. I, I didn't, and then apparently they were pretty good, and I was like, oh, all right, great. I could say that about a lot of bands. Yeah. I almost saw Jimi Hendrix, but <laughs> did, did, <laughs> well, no, you didn't. There was no way you could have almost seen. Yeah, him. I just almost saw him because like, I, I, I just got born at the wrong time. <laughs> I was just driving <laughs> past his grave, <laughs> and I was like, I could have seen him if I wanted to. Technically, <laughs> I saw him. I saw his his name. Where is he buried? I have no, no idea. No idea. I know that. Uh, I know Jimmy. Uh, what's that? Jim. Jim. Not Henson. Who's the guy? Jim Morrison. That's it. He's in Paris, isn't he? I don't know. Yeah, I think my dad's I'm going to Google it. right now. Where is Jimi Hendrix buried? Oh, uh, what if this is some like King Arthur shit? And no, oh, it's Greenwood Memorial, <laughs> Memorial Park. All right, then. That, that fucking ruined all hopes of maybe having a, uh, like a, a quest, a, a, like a psychedelic King Arthur. <laughs> wouldn't that be cool, man? I mean, like, there's that comic book going around called The Hip Hop Family Tree. Yeah, which is awesome. basically that. <laughs> well, we're not not King Arthur, but it's just hip hop, like old hip hop uh, heads, like fucking in a comic book. That's pretty cool. It's but dope. Like, yeah, like an old an old rock, but King like a King Arthur reimagining. That'd be pretty cool, man. Yeah, who would who would be who? Who would of be the Knights of the Round Table? Oh, if shit. you could, had to pick, like, well, like who's, who's you don't like have a, to line them up. So yeah, yeah I'm trying to I'm it. trying to think of like real activist people. They're going to be Sir Lancelot, like the break Jane Fonda. Right, <laughs> I know she's not a rock a rockman, <laughs> but she, <laughs> she can be Sir Lancelot. So right, Sir okay. Lancelot. Okay, that's an interesting choice. Um, Galahad, who's who's pure of heart. Oh, uh, not them, many. Really. <laughs> not, not many of Psy- them. Psychedelic uh, rock didn't well, have too many pure hearts. No, I was, I was going to say Bob Dylan, but even he's done some some shady shit. What do you mean? What's Bob Dylan done? Just like there's just rumors. Well, oh, that, there's well, always rumours about everyone. There's always rumours about everyone. You never hear like someone from the classic rock era that's just like, oh, he didn't, just a nice guy. Yeah. Clapton? Yeah, I guess Clapton. No one, no one's, <laughs> really, no one's really said anything bad about him. So, fuck it. Like, and, he, and he played that, that classic guitar riff, didn't he? What's that in? Yeah, again, what is that in? <laughs> In wonderful tonight, man. I've, I, I, might, I probably heard You've that song. Definitely heard I've it. heard that guitar. We can't room. play it because we will get destroyed. <laughs> we will we'll get sued. <laughs> In a fact, lot. I could probably get sued from just that weird well, interpretation of it. No, I, I think that's fair. I think that's fair use under copyright law. I think, you can, <laughs> think you're allowed to beep to any if guitar anything, if you want. We're promoting Eric Clapton. Not that he needs promotion. No, I guess he needs a little bit of promotion. <laughs> He's, I think his fan base is slowly dying off. So. Yeah. One like, by one. We're one by one. Uh, OAP by OAP. Broken hip by... I like to think he's got a count a... that's updated live. <laughs> like... <laughs> oh my God. How fucking weird would that be? You know, like those shitty death clocks that you used to have on the internet where you fucking just typed in your, um, your, your fucking date of birth or whatever and then answer some questions like, you're going to die on March 3rd, uh, 2028. Yeah. Uh, and you're like... I think I should already be dead by now according to one of those. If yeah, I yeah, yeah. I, th- I think one of mine was like, 2014 or something like that so fuck you internet i survived <laughs> but yeah so basically it just has it but it's just basically the uh the career clock out uh, the the career clock and it shows all your fans slowly dying yeah right and you're like getting to the bottom we're gonna need to get some new fans soon this and- is the curse that the knights of the round table have to overcome man what all their they fans wake dying. up right and every morning they're greeted with death with a fucking scroll looking metal as shit oh. with his siphon that just like here's the f- here's how many of your fucking fans are still alive and they're dying <laughs> one by one and you've got to keep them alive through the music you got to keep them alive through the music you got to keep the 60s alive bro <laughs> <laughs> who else hey, would pass be that me that j that's, that's fucking death he's like just passes that <laughs> all right get on with your quest so i guess robert plant's in there 
Robert Plant's in there. Yeah, yeah. But I, I can't remember. They're, those are like the only few nights of the round table that I can remember. What, like classic rockers? Like famous rock Yeah, stars. no, but okay. They oh, can so be we, alive or dead. Okay, they can be alive or dead. So because it's fantasy, Plant. let's face it. We've got okay. fucking death here with a scroll that counts Jerry, down fans. Jerry Garcia. Yeah. There you go. That uh, Fuck Jane Fonda, right? She's off the <laughs> table now. That's Sir Lancelot, <laughs> is uh, Jerry Garcia, man. Well, Jane Fonda could still be there. Sucking his dick, I guess. She could be a... <laughs> was there a bird on the Knights of the Round Table? Well, she couldn't have been a knight, but was there just a bird knocking about? I guess, yeah. In, uh, yeah, she can just be caught wench. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Jane I'm pretty Fonda... sure Jane Fonda would not stand for that. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure she's done more to deserve the position of... Something above court wench, you know. Okay, how about She's pretty um, cool. How about notes taker? Minutes, minutes person. Minuteman. Minuteman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she could just guess. take the minutes down. Yeah. Or she's like or she could be like, um think about it, right? She works with a lot of animals and stuff, right? Not that I know of. <laughs> Chimpanzees. She, mm, is that you're thinking of a different person? I'm not. Dude. I swear Jane Fonda. <laughs> Works uh, with right. chimpanzees. I'm going to have to look this up right now. See, this is the the excellence of the internet. Oh, my God. You're literally <laughs> just going to type in Jane Fonda chimpanzee. What comes up? Okay. Jane Goodall. Jane Goodall. You fucking idiot. That's what I <laughs> thought you were thinking of. Up. <laughs> You've done that so many times, dude. What was it I today? You thought, <laughs> you thought Avatar was a fucking Peter Jackson movie. <laughs> I am so out of touch. <laughs> <laughs> you really are. <laughs> to be fair, you can forgive me for Jane Fonda because that's way out of my lifetime. Yeah, but I mean, it's still just kind of like general knowledge <laughs> that Jane Fonda is not the same as Jane Goodall, the woman from Gorillas in you the know Mist. Why? You know why? Because they're both called Jane. No, yeah, I, got I was you. thinking of the fucking episode of The Simpsons. Oh, right. Which one? The There's one si- where they go to the chimpanzee sanctuary um when they get lost in africa simpson safari is the name of the episode i can't remember that one um, I, I think i think i've seen something like that but and i can't i can't, re- I can't even remember her name in that but it's probably not jane fonda either <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's just... not jane, fonda. jane fonda was like a like a war activist right like yeah back in the day same thing she was, right? she was very yeah <laughs> just fucking talking to a bunch of chimps and government you know what i'm saying yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> bloody fucking apes in their monkey suits <laughs> <laughs> trying to govern that ape law over us <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna grab your bananas bitch <laughs> we're free thinkers talking of apes far cry primal is something we're going to talk about later when we finish the science of the round table discussion just wanted to <laughs> just to put my like, dude. I can see the notepad as well. <laughs> I know we're going to talk about this later. Sweet. Who else would be in it, man? Come on, just let's like Jimi Hendrix, obviously. So we've got Jimi Hendrix, we've got Jerry Garcia, Jane Fonda, um, Jim Morrison. Oh, Jay's got, got Jim Morrison <laughs> knocking about as well. <laughs> yeah, obviously, yeah. you got Jim Morrison. Yeah, I can't really think of. I'm not, oh, I've got to have someone from. Oh, who's the he's dead oh you said you can have a live or dead yeah live or dead mm, who would we have from Leonard Skinner oh they can just be they can just be not, not like part like one of the knights but they can be just general merrymen they're like a gang yeah no they could be ghosts I mean I know that's kind of me <laughs> <laughs> they're not all dead I don't know Either. but like the, the ones that did die right they can just be like ghosts knocking about the castle right or, okay actually where would they live they wouldn't live in a castle right they'd live in a hippie commune they'd live in a, they'd live in a commune wouldn't they yeah, I guess. In a swamp. In a swamp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Other famous rock and roll heads. I don't know. I, I'm really not too well versed on my, my 60s. Well, evidently shit. I'm not because, <laughs> I, you know. <laughs> you even know well, Jane Fonda's not a thing. rocker. She's an actress. Well, no, but same era. I know nothing. You know. Some... I don't know celebrity culture at all. That's what I've realised. And I'm quite proud of myself. For, no, I, I'm proud of not... you too for not having it like injected into your childhood. <laughs> Excellent. I'm glad. Let's play another song, man. Let's play another song. It's uh, we're we're 12 minutes in. You know, we're getting through it. We're getting through it today. This is Undercurrents by Hitchers, who we've played with um before. We played with them up in Sheffield. They're really cool guys, and they actually said that they liked us, which is a first. Yeah, first of <laughs> I was going to say many, but first of a couple, I guess. <laughs>
And we're back, and that was Undercurrents by Hitchers. Yeah. So, what are we going to talk about this section? We want to talk about Far Cry Primal, right? Yeah. You, yeah. Well, you're seeing as you brought it up like yeah. three minutes ago. Well, I could have, we kept of ah, we could have kept people on tender hooks. They already all know, know about Far Cry Primal as well. It's been, it's been like bukkake across the entire front page of everything. <laughs> yeah, today. I guess. I guess, and it's, we're not putting this up till Sunday. I get so you know. Even more time. Even now. more time. Yeah, you're all right, mate. face on the microphone okay. stand. I forgot to ask about that. Are you feeling better? This yeah, week? I'm feeling much better. Feeling if you couldn't much... tell from my voice. Yeah, um, your voice is sounding a lot more peppy. Sounding still chirpier. Got, still got a cough, but... Um, Don't we hey. all. <laughs> I, I just have a permanent smoker's cough, so like... Cool, man. That's, r- not, that's not, metal. No, it's not metal. That means I'm dying slowly <laughs> from the inside out, and yet I still have the conviction to just continue <laughs> killing myself. That is even more metal. Yeah, man. <laughs> I can't wait to meet my maker. Flip him off. <laughs> Immediately get sent back down. Like, yeah. <laughs> like somehow I've ascended to the heavens. He was like, God's like, uh, we, we saw you did some kind of bad shit, but it was forgivable. So you're allowed to come up and I just fucking flip him off. And he's like, it's not cool, dog. You're in my house. Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> just kicks you down like a flight of stairs. You hit every single one and then you're doomed to hang out in a swamp with the doors. Yeah, man. Fuck that. I, I, I'm, I'm cool with that. The doors, Lynn and Skinner. Oh, yeah, because yeah, they're dead. <laughs> yeah. Um, pr- Far Cry Primal. Yeah, Far Cry Primal. We did that thing again where yeah. you, you said we said what we were going to talk about. <laughs> and then fucked and then it just up fucked immediately. Because I noticed we did that last week on the last episode. We literally just said, Zack Snyder's been talking about Watchmen. <laughs> we just went off on something completely different for, like, for, the, for that section. Well, that's what we do. We just like inform people like, Here's a bit of news. Um, uh, like you can it look is. it up yourself. <laughs> like, if you want to hear more about that, Google's right there. We're just letting you know that it's a thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, right, so Far Cry Primal is a game in which it's Far Cry, but without guns. Yeah. In uh, in some... The Mesolithic era. Yeah, which is fucking awesome, right? Which is for those who aren't versed on that anthropology. Gosh, it's <laughs> basically cavemen. Like, like... It's cavemen who fucking have tools and shit, but they don't have agriculture yet. So they're still hunter-gatherers, and they're still fucking huge animals knocking about. Yeah. So basically, it's like Far Cry, but on steroids, right? 
because they've taken away anything that made it easier for you to kill animals. And then they were like, while we're at, we'll just make the animals like three times as big too. So you got fucking like huge wolves, huge bears, huge elephants, huge fucking tigers knocking about. You're fucked, basically. You're fucked from the get go. And I, and I can't wait. <laughs> Apparently it's going to be some mad weapon building system from what we've heard. Yeah. Because, uh, like the go on. Yeah. Because basically there was, there's obviously no historical records other than what we've dug up and pieced together. So we could all be wrong, technically. Yeah, technically. Um, um, so they've had some creative freedom to make some cool looking shit. And there's a creative uh, choices video thing that's on YouTube you can go watch. And it's got some pictures of like stuff that they're planning on implementing and shit. Mm. And it looks pretty cool, man. Like I've I've wanted a game like this for a while since I played Torok on the GameCube. Yeah. Um, and I really like Torok, but obviously it's got that sci-fi element to it. And I was always just like, what if there was just a game? Or it's just like big and open and it was just like caveman shit, man. Yeah. Well, what about um, Ark Survival Evolved? Is that what it's called? I mean, I know that's kind of set in the, because you, aren't you like riding dinosaurs or some shit? Yeah, in that? it's got some weird like, um, and it's also more of like a, uh, it's like kind of got some Minecraft type elements and stuff to it, I think. Yeah. So what, like, like hunt and gather a build your own shit? Kind of yeah stuff. i mean i haven't played it at all but like you know i've heard like such mixed things about it that i haven't been willing to splurge the 25 yeah, pounds yeah yeah it like it keeps going on sale every week or so down to like 15 quid and i'm and i do look at it and, I'm, and it is mildly interesting because when it first came out like because of all the like the promo art for it right just looked fucking shit it looked like some really shit indie game yeah and obviously some people picked it up and they started blabbing on about it. oh it's pretty cool so i looked into it a bit more and it did look pretty cool but it's one of those games you have to have friends to play with really i think yeah yeah definitely um i mean we could play it together but other than that we're kind of fucked really aren't yeah we? pretty much and i think you need like a group of four it's kind of like um evolve yeah no. yeah evolve that pretty game much. that's really not that good no like there was they so much up yeah but... there, there was so much hype for that at MCM, like uh, the last one I went to, which was October 2014. And that well, was. Just... You came in May. Did I? No, I didn't come this May. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. Oh, no, you didn't. No, I didn't. Shit. Yeah. yeah you dude, didn't. I was in work that weekend. Right. So, yeah. Uh... I remember now. <laughs> but yeah, no. So that was being fucking splurged everywhere. And I remember looking at it and again thinking, like, that looks actually kind of cool. That's a really cool concept. The fact that yeah. you can be a monster. And if they don't kill you, you evolve and you're making it even harder. But apparently that like that system just was not balanced at all. No, apparently it's just like if you wanted to play the monster, there was some fucking huge waiting system and you could barely ever do it and shit. Annoying. But anyway, I've got high hopes for Far Cry Primal because I liked four. It got a lot of flack because it was basically three. Three reskinned. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, they did a lot of new shit with it and it was just like. At its core, they're just well-made, fun shooters. It's a yeah. bit like Call of Duty. Like, they're not amazing. They're not groundbreaking, really. They're but just solid. They're just fucking they're solid, and solid well games. made. I don't think like it's it's been a while since like a Call of Duty came out. Uh, came out, and everyone was like, "That was fucking awful." They're not awful, but no one's ever like, "Yeah, like you said, they're not like best games of the year." They're just solid games that keep coming out. Well, we've should... got the new Black Ops coming, and that could be dreadful i've heard some some things about it from the beta but again you can't really judge from that um and it's all still with balancing from what i've heard so far and again that's always something that gets patched like six months into release anyway yeah, yeah, yeah. when they just nerf a couple of things <laughs> but no, back onto far cry though i really do feel like this is like the like the most natural successor to the games because the games have always been based around like survival yeah and um you know keep it like staying alive in nature and i guess i guess it just probably popped into the heads i was like why the fuck haven't we done cavemen yet like that seems to because it's literally the core part of our game they've literally it feels like they've just stripped out like all this extraneous stuff away from it and just been like this is the core basics this is what we're getting down to you're collecting plants you're collecting animals and you're fucking making some weapons and just trying to survive uh, uh, i don't know what kind of story they could really have in this. I know they were like, they've teased other tribes and stuff. So I guess yeah. they're going to go along a whole, oh my God, there's other fucking tribe trying to steal our shit all the time. Let's fuck them up. Oh, let's migrate or some shit. I really like to see like some real dark shit, like, uh, like some cannibalism shit. Yeah. Or... Some cannibalism. I'd like to see some supernatural stuff if possible. That would like be the cool, monolith man. and stuff. I mean, just today we was in uni looking at, um, space odyssey. Um, 
And that's just like such a fucking awesome scene. Yeah. Right? I mean, obviously, if they don't go too over the top, like, oh, you actually get in contact with aliens. But like, um, yeah, they just had just some weird kind of, shit knocking just about. Some weird, like, yeah, because that's the thing. If you think about it, right, um, like, that's where a lot of myths come from. It's just people like like early era people who obviously do not like have a grasp on science at all. Yeah. Experiencing weird shit. And they're like, that's clearly a mo-. like. It's like fucking manatees, for example. We all know know what manatees are. They're just fat, fucking pudgy mammals that swim across the bottom of like rivers and shit. But people used to think they were fucking mermaids. People saw those and they were like, oh my god, there are people with fucking fins living under the water, and they're gonna seduce. You. Uh, that, I wonder where that came from. Yeah. Do you think someone fucked a manatee? I think someone fucked a manatee. Fucked a manatee. And then and then Bob and then- came up and were like, what are you doing, Tim? <laughs> so, oh, oh, she, the, the mermaid seduced me. <laughs> yeah. Basically, I mean, Far Cry has been one of those series that's not been afraid to do weird shit. Mm. I mean, Far Cry 1 is fucking weird as shit. You start fighting. Well, I don't care about spoilers because it's, you know, like nearly 20 years old now. When did no, the okay. first Far Cry come out? Maybe not 20 years old. 15 years. I don't yeah, know. maybe. It's like early PS2, 2000s, right? I think. Yeah. Early 2000s. Um, I'm going to say. Um, and... Um, yeah, that you ended up like fighting mutants and shit towards the end, and like weird experiments of people, and then Far Cry Two stripped it back. Um, to, Except for with malaria. Yeah, that was irritating. But like even like Far Cry Three and f- Four have yeah, still got, got that weird trippy shit, and like yeah. they're not afraid to go supernatural. Like Far Cry Four has the whole section with like Shangri La and stuff. Not really spoilers because it's in the trailers. Um, What's the Shangri La thing? I don't know what that is. It's basically you know you're up in like um, Nepal basically yeah, yeah yeah um so you're hanging out with monks um you drop some shrooms or some shit um, nice and uh then you just go to this weird like alternative dimension where you have to do a lot of sneaking and stabby shit um rather than just all out shooting which i think a lot of that those kind of mechanics and that section is probably going to be a good taster for primal um but yeah they're not afraid to go weird with it so i'd be excited to see if they actually do kind of capitalize on the fact that they've got this setting where they literally have a blank slate and they can suspend disbelief quite yeah, a lot yeah no, that would and uh, and again it would be really cool if somehow they can still base it in reality the supernatural shit that's going on yeah. but because obviously as the audience and as the character you have no idea what's going on they present it in a way where it feels almost supernatural and maybe you could see like the the birth of some like really like like old fucking religions man that would be mental yeah that would be interesting i think we're going into like territory that these games companies would never touch yeah because they're like we're we're not gonna fucking t- tackle with the the birth of religion because that's just <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get so hurt if we do this <laughs> yeah it would be interesting though to see like worship and like just weird shit like cavemen yeah, nature worship man that'd yeah be cool like it'd be awesome to see and like obviously some real fucked up dark shit like worshiping death and stuff some metal oh, shit yeah that would be cool yeah there was literally like th- that other trap because we saw in the trailer if you've not watched the trailer yet like the last shot is you're walking through like this forest and you have a torch and then just fucking out of nowhere some dude in like turquoise paint and like white dots all over his face just pops out like whoa with a fucking axe and what would be cool if that was like a tribe that, like you know worshipped like death it was like some real like satanic shit obviously not satanic because they have a satan but weird yeah man we yeah. should be working for Ubisoft. that's our point of re- <laughs> that's like our point of reference for all things like negative and dark and evil right like satan is. is like up there right satan's pretty cool yeah um <laughs> but like like think before that what was the point what, of reference for that yeah like, what what was the most evil thing i guess they just didn't really um have evil in their minds i mean they, obviously there were evil things but like i don't think people were too focused on it yeah Weird. It was more like, I just need some berries in my mouth because yeah. I'm going to die soon. Or some mammoth meat. Oh, man. Imagine how good that was. Oh, that was another thing. I, I, was, I said this to you like three times when we were watching the trailer, but I cannot fucking wait to kill a mammoth. Like those <laughs> things look, I mean, they are. And so they've got the scale, right? Those things are absolutely huge. And they look like they're going to be, they look like they're going to be very reminiscent of like the dragon fights in Skyrim. Yeah. When it's just going to be like these really long, well, obviously until you get overpowered in Skyrim, you just, like blow them out of the sky. You're never going to get too overpowered. What, blowing mammoths out of the sky? Yeah, you can't just blow. You, there's, there's, I mean, like the dude, the dude, the dudes at Ubisoft will basically say, you are going to level up and your weapons are going to get stronger but there's not going to be a point where you're going to basically have like a fucking bazooka just <laughs> blowing away well this mammoth. is ubisoft so it could be dlc 
oh god <laughs> uh, like war painted mammoths yeah and um so yeah it, it, they look like they're going to be really difficult long fights which obviously when you kill a mammoth it is a long fight because they're fucking huge one thing i'm expecting is a bit of a focus on co-op yeah, definitely. Judging from what we saw in the trailer, is like there's kind You're of always this... hanging about in a tribe. It looks yeah, like, obviously, yeah, it makes sense. Um, so I, I mean, they integrated or they dip their toes a bit with Far Cry Four with the like story drop in, drop out co op thing. So it'd be interesting yeah, yeah. to see if they actually make like a full playable campaign in co op mode. Because like a, they did a lot that in of... Far Cry Three, didn't they? Um, yeah, they did. I don't think it was a whole campaign. Was it not a whole campaign? No, I think they just had some missions and stuff where you could oh. drop in. No, 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 no. I swear, I swear there's a full campaign that's multiplayer. I fucking, I'm, I'm almost certain I played a little bit with my little brothers. Um. Okay, yeah. Far Cry 3 as a cooperative mode for two to four players. But, Sweet. Um, they're just, I think they're just a few missions. Yeah, no, I don't think it's a full-fledged story. No. But, yeah, it's a couple of missions sweet man so yeah they i mean they've dipped their toes so you know who knows what they could do with the new consoles being in their full swing now um and pc obviously just holding itself up forever <laughs> oh never gonna die yeah. <laughs> um so yeah i've just I, I i personally really like co-op games um i know a lot of people get bad press for focusing too much online but um you know uh, Ubisoft have kind of proved that they can do it when they try. Like a Assassin's Creed Unity, as much shit as it got, when I was playing it with a few mates, it was a really, really enjoyable game. Yeah. Just like solid. Um, it had some glitches and stuff, but nothing too major on Xbox One, at least. I tell you what, I've just thought if this if fucking Far Cry blows up, you can guarantee there's going to be a primal part of their theme park, man. Yeah. There's going to be a primal section in their theme park. It's like Alton Towers, mate. They have a little. Like caveman bit there, they have the corkscrew there, and you just fucking woo go through mammoth shit. Don't matter. <laughs> so we've um we've already got a release date on it as well. Yeah, man. Which is February of next year, which is pretty sweet. February twenty third, I think it was twenty third. That's my sister's but and my brother's birthday. So uh got my little brother's birthday present sorted out right sweet. there. Done. <laughs> Um, Michelle, if he listens to this, that's been ruined for him. Uh, whatever. I don't. I don't. He's gonna be seventeen. I don't think he gives a shit about surprises anymore. Cool, man. Good. Uh, good to see that he's getting jaded at a young age. Yeah, man. I don't. Uh, that's all my family. Well, not they're not all jaded, but we are all just very like. Ugh. I don't give a fuck. It's because like, you're from the north. Yeah, I don't even think it's because of that. I just think. Uh, no, nah, yeah, I think it might be. But <laughs> <laughs> it's just gone to that way. Like, I've always been shit when it comes to presents. You know what I mean? Like, every every birthday that I can remember, whenever someone said, like, uh, you know, oh, what do you want for your birthday? I've just been like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I've got no idea what I want. See, that just proves how good I've got it in life when I've got no idea what yeah, I man. actually want. What do you give the man who's got everything? This song by J.U. <laughs> <laughs> This is day 16 of um, JU's doing a like uh, doing a whole month, mm. so, like a song a day challenge for this month. I mean, he said himself that he's fallen behind a bit, but he's still going to finish doing the 31 songs or whatever. Yeah. Um, if you guys can remember, we featured JU on our first episodes. If you're long time in a inverted commas uh, listeners, you'll remember his track Extinction. It's quite a long time now, though, isn't it? Well, yeah, that, well, this is 12 weeks ago because we missed a week, didn't we? Yeah, so. it's quite a while. Anyway, this is the 16th day. Enjoy. Wow. <sighs> yes, my lion. What a lovely morning. From I opened up my eyes and I look up to the sky. And see the sunshine was falling. Up on every single light Made me feel so good inside This moment that we are caught in And I'm trying to describe A scenery that our minds can envision Oh, what a beautiful time that we live in I just wanna say this Come, come, come now Will you accompany me as I take a stroll? Because it's not too often that we get to when the sun's out We should take this opportunity, man, we should go I mean, who knows? We just might come across a memory so vivid that potentially could give us back a soul 
What could really go wrong? Tie up your shoelace and be heading out the door. Come, come, let's roll. Let's visit a place we've never been before. As I take up on this task and walk along this gravel path, I notice everything I pass is filling me with a little bit of hope. We should continue down this road. Who knows what it may show? We can talk about the birds and the bees, or take time to witness the colorful birds in the trees. On this lovely morning, from I opened up my eyes and I look up to the sky, and see the sunshine was falling. Upon every single light, made me feel so good inside. This moment that we are caught in, and I'm trying to describe a scenery that our minds can envision. Oh, what a beautiful time that we live in. I just wanna say this. Come, come, come now. There are still so many things that we can see, and we still have a couple more hours before sundown. I just want to stay in this place. I don't want to leave. Wouldn't you agree? This is rather ideal And aren't you glad that you took the time out to walk with me and just be free? Take a break from reality, oh Please, please, oh yes please This is exactly what I need And everything within me telling me this is how it should be To take heed and just admire the scene on this lovely morning Yes, my lion So that was Ju just with a track entitled "Day 16 from his uh, 30 Day Song Challenge thing. Um, we're going to try and get him on when we're actually opened up. Um, yeah, man. I just should say we're waiting on like four bits of paperwork now. So we're literally in the final fucking phases of getting this yeah. shit done. None of, the, none of the, the, those bits of paperwork are ones that we need to do, right? No, nope, it's all it's all in their hands. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this is the scary part. Where yeah, we just have to wait around for fucking. Three weeks, three months again. <laughs> <laughs> I have to find another fucking place again. Nah, fuck that. I'm sure it'll be fine. I mean, like basically, all that's coming back is like um, something like the subletting consent thing, which is to do with like yeah. uh, it's fine to sublet. The asbestos it. survey, asbestos survey, which is pretty important. But again, the whole building got. <laughs> I knocked over my drink. Sorry. The whole building got like done out, so I'm guessing there's no asbestos. Um, Hopefully, but yeah, um, I think I could deal with it if there is a little. Yeah, bit. It's I'm, fine. I'm a hard just, man, man. You know, a seasoned smoker. Asbestos yeah, is nothing, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's got no lung to grab onto. <laughs> um, and then just a couple of other little bits that are just like um, mortgagees consent and shit like that. So should all be fine. Fingers crossed. Um, right, we got another topic. Following on from our conversation last week about Tony Hawk's being shit and Need for Speed maybe, hopefully, not being shit. Yeah. It got announced like a few days after that they're doing a burnout spiritual successor. Which by, basically means copy, right? So they're, they're going to they're gonna be making another game that is doesn't say burnout on the thing, but it is burnout. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited for it. I mean, I, I fucking love the Burnout games. I even, like, we were talking about this earlier on, but um, I really even loved Burnout Paradise. And that yeah, got yeah a that lot gets of a bit stick. of flack, but yeah, shtick. I love that word. Yeah. I don't know, it just sounds so chocolatey. Shtick. <laughs> Except <laughs> for that at the end. But yeah, there's anyway. a lot of shtick. But um, I, I just really like any game that really gives you a sense of speed. Like when you're racing, like that's definitely why I prefer arcade racers yeah, over, no, say, like Gran Turismo or Forza. Do you know what? It's a really good game, actually. Like, it's a really good in between. Well, we're going to get back onto Burnout, I promise. I bookmarked yeah. it. But um, Grid. Have you ever played Grid? I've never played it. I had Grid. Um, I got it for free with a graphics card years ago. Yeah. But like the code didn't work. Ah. Oh. So I just never, ever got the chance to get it. But the I could get it now. It's like super fucking it's cheap. It's super right? cheap, man. But like, I don't know. that. Like I I played that quite a bit. And that's actually really funny. It, it, it gives you that sense of speed and like real power. But then when like, when you do fuck up, you are like, shit. I did yeah. fuck up. And you do qu- slow down quite a bit, but you managed to. It's, it's still, but it's still got that nice um kind of like heaviness to it. So it feels like you're driving like, a proper car and you're doing like proper races but it's still got the the arcadiness of being able to just bash through people to get to the front sometimes i heard that colin mccray dirt they're pretty good games but oh yeah, yeah again yeah. i haven't they've had the chance to play them but i've always i've always sucked at rally games because i yeah. can never get the uh the drift thing down properly where you keep it up to speed but you're just like basically going sideways around i'll the just release bend. the accelerator and hit the brake on man 
Oh, that's not what it is, is it? Because <laughs> if you just hit the brake on, then you're going to slow well, down, aren't you? Well, like, no, no this is what I'm saying. But rally I, games are really hard. <laughs> the, the you just have to like feather the brake. It's hard but to that, explain. Mean, that means like restriction, and I'm really shit when it comes to restricting myself. I'm either <laughs> holding the accelerator or I'm holding the brake. Which one am I doing? <laughs> um, I really like Motorstorm as well. Oh yeah, I used to. I I played Motorstorm Pacific Rim like once. I've never um, played Pacific Rim. I only ever played the first one, but I really enjoyed that. That had that same sense of speed and shit, and it was also pretty chaotic because you had like the different classes of car, which yeah. is pretty sweet. Um. <laughs> So yeah, burnout. I hope they don't fuck it up. Well, I mean, if they do fuck it up, they're, they're just going to put their hands up and be like, so it wasn't a burnout game, so you got no, you guys have nothing to be angry about. Very oh, true. Oh, fuck you. But yeah, no, I used to I used to love the burnout games. My favourite, the, the one that I just played religiously for like a good three years. I didn't give a fuck. I played this game for ages because I didn't have many PS2 games. It was Burnout Revenge. I yeah. just used to love playing that game. So much. I like I really did like Burnout 3 when I had it, but um oh, I don't know, Burnout Revenge was just something different for me. It well, really it just blew my hair away when I first got it. Because I got it like around 2006, it's so like a year after it came out, so it was yeah. still kind of new in my and I, I, I like when I was younger I didn't get games when they were new. You know what yeah. I mean? So this like when I first got it, it just fucking blew my hair away. I was like, this is so quick. I th- I'm going insane. <laughs> I remember I, I cut my teeth on Burnout 3. Um, you cut your what? Cut my teeth, man. What does that mean? It's just like I can't believe you've never heard that phrase. Cut your teeth is just like um, you warmed up, started out on it. Look, I'm going to prove to you right now that it's. A I mean, real I phrase. believe you. You don't have to prove it to me. Oh, for fuck's sake! I'm not going to. So apparently, there's a song called "Cut, cut Your teeth, teeth" by Kygo, who isn't very good. Get one's first experience by doing or learn early in life, as in I cut my teeth. On this kind of layout. Okay. So yeah, I cut my teeth on racing games with Burnout 3. Um, and uh, <laughs> then I remember I saved up to get Revenge, actually. Um, went like I didn't get it as soon as it came out. Because obviously it was like a full retail game, which back then was only like 30 quid. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it's like, yeah, but like it, that's weird to think that PS2 games were once priced at like 30 pounds. Yeah. It's just odd, man. Then now they're like $60 and a uh, big hunk of dlc on top of that oh, i know they just i feel like buying games nowadays just feels so much uglier like i know what they're going for is kind of like the vinyl thing where it's like oh the more shit we give you with this game the more it's going to feel like a proper piece of like piece of art and it's like yeah no i just i literally like the, the most i'll go for the most is like a metal case and that's about it yeah. and even then i feel like that's just going over the top because i don't know i just i just like just having a fucking normal case and Maybe the booklet. The booklet has to be nice. I, I, I've not, I've not read a single booklet for a game in about like seven years now. I always used to read the booklets for games, like in PS2 games and shit. I was, I was talking about this the other day, right? Literally, I've got a copy of Metal Gear Solid Three right in front of me. Um, PS2 with net features. <laughs> um, Did you ever use the net features? No, because I didn't have the adapter. The no. uh, if you needed like an Ethernet uh, broadband thing, I didn't get. Um, like a broadband wireless connection until I was like 14, 15 maybe. Yeah, I, I didn't get a broadband wireless connection until I moved out to Australia. And he, Well, no. Well, that was a um, one of those like fucking USB sticks that you stuck yeah. in the side and then had like, it was basically, you had, you had eight gigabytes a month and because I was a piece of shit, we'd always used to go super over and we'd get mass massive charges. So sorry about that, mum. So like, here's the Metal Gear Solid Free Snake Eater book. It's pretty thick. It looks yeah, and at the front of it, it's got a mini graphic novel, man. Oh, see, this is what I mean. Like, you wouldn't get this shit in a fucking Xbox 360 thing. I I don't know. They, I just feel like they put way more because obviously back then you didn't have the internet to answer any questions. Well, you did, but yeah. it was like people weren't referring it wasn't as to it. Common. Yeah, it wasn't as common. It wasn't really like a utility as it is now, which it it definitely is. The internet's a utility and it should be treated that way. Yeah, but um. Yeah, so they obviously put way more effort into their books. And I just, like, that that was my favourite part was, like, before I even played the game, I used to read through the entire book. I'd go over, like, a fucking massive shit and just read. <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. I used to do the exact same thing. Yeah, make sure I've got everything down in my head. It's like, all right, so L1, L1 shoots, L2 fucking grenades. So I didn't have to do the tutorial and shit. Just fucking read through it, done. Get on with the game. Yeah. And uh, now 
oh, if you buy a PC game now, this is probably the worst thing. I mean, obviously Steam's great, but if you buy a physical copy, I've seen shit where you literally get a fucking case and you open it up. There's no manual. You just got a fucking sheet with a download code on it. That's just fucking awful. And no disc. Must and it t- and it takes fucking forever to get to actual gameplay time as well. Even when once you get into the game, just like fucking tutorial, oh, just everything. I can't, I can't stand. I honestly can't stand tutorial levels. It's like, wh- why is your game so complicated that you need to put me in this piece of shit fucking laid out tutorial section so you can ham fistedly show me all the like? What what you should do is instead of fucking giving me a tutorial level, just fucking put me in the game and have the game like have your level design be good enough that I learn all that shit by myself. Exactly, man. Like back to Metal Gear Solid Three, where it starts you off. You start off in that really quiet bit of jungle. Yeah, just that you, tiny little bit. Just... You can get to grips with like, okay, this is crouch, stand, uh, crawl around and shit. Like, just play yeah. around with the controls. Yeah, you have to do all of that just to get to your fucking thing. But they didn't tell you. It just goes, go over there. <laughs> yeah. And then it puts you in that other section where like, you go for a swamp and there's a few alligators about. And you can like choose to kind of go around them. You can try and kill them, trank them, whatever. And then it puts you, the next section is like quite an open area with like four the, guards in it. It's not the bridge bit, right? The bridge is after that. That bridge is after that, yeah. So like, again, it's just basically just slowly Just slowly building you into you. it. Instead of fucking putting you in this blocky, stupid fucking tutorial bit and just blasting down your Ugh. area for fucking five minutes. Like, now throw a grenade. Like, I don't give a shit. Basically, GTA does that and it pisses me off. Oh, GTA every, 5 was every, literally like... Every GTA game at the beginning... <sighs> feels it, it takes forever to get into any gta game like I, I tried playing san andreas about three months ago on the yeah. mac before i killed it and um it just just takes for fucking ever to get into any meaningful g- gameplay it just feels like just so much exposition and then there's that fucking level where like you have to just ride around on a bike for like five minutes just so we can tell you everything about the bike it's like i could have fucking worked this all out on my own you didn't need to give me a five minute mission where i had to bike away from enemies <laughs> have you ever had, um oh shit i can't think of any examples off the top of my head but it always pisses me off in games where you fuck up a bit of the tutorial and instead of just being like oh you fucked up but you'll know what to do it literally puts you back at the fucking start like it's a whole level or like a stage yeah you have to redo everything i think monsters inc on the ps1 did that which is a weird, weird example, but uh, quite a few games do it and it still pisses me off to this day. Um, I just reminded myself um, of uh, the fucking whole long unnecessary, but totally awesome tutorials that you had with MGS2. You know, the VR missions. Oh, the VR missions. Yeah, they, they were in MGS1 as well. Yeah. They're really fucking cool, man. Like just, but they were optional. Exactly, that's what that I mean. That was the coolest like, part. They're long and they're basically like, like a separate game and they get increasingly more difficult. Like, yeah, which is really good. Cool. And you can drop in, like you didn't have to do the first shitty one if you already knew how to stand and crouch. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like say you got to a part of the game, you're like, wait, like, I mean, obviously it, w- it would still be near the beginning of the game because it just basically deals with like advanced basics like near the end but yeah you get to a bit you're like how am i supposed to evade cameras and guards and you just drop in you quickly do like a fucking three minute thing and it's not forced into your face you know what i mean and then you even had some really like awesome ones with mgs2 substance where it was like take out this amount of guards and yeah they were this all, amount so of some, like sometimes they're like yeah like you said mini games almost yeah, yeah. exactly oh metal gear used to be so good oh. uh yeah you were saying to me before that you, i want you, to love right we're, okay, gonna, play we're gonna play a song yeah yeah <laughs> Right, this is Lark Hill with a song called Post Teen Rebelliousness, which is great. It's a cool name. Cool man. name for a song, man. Also, just uh, just before we play the song, props to the bassist for having a fucking cool beard. You're rocking it, dude. <laughs> I hope hopefully you haven't just shaved off your beard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking out alive 
that was Lark Hill with post-team rebelliousness and hopefully he hasn't shaved off the beard and is now listening to this, maybe. Just like, vibrated. <laughs> <laughs> He's just stroking his fucking baby this face. This one stranger who does a podcast on the internet. Yeah, I, I was getting picked on a lot for my, not picked on, but like our tutor kept fucking pointing out the fact that I had a beard today, basically. Am I the only person in our class that has a beard? Because I've not really been paying you attention. Are. But he was just saying, like, these are good examples that you need to live up to. Yeah, my beard shit. <laughs> anyway, right. Yeah. Battle Gear Solid 5, ask me some questions about it. Yeah, no, uh, I just, because, obviously, when, when, when it first... Spoilers, maybe. We'll yeah, just maybe. mark it now. But uh, when it first came out, you know, we talked about it a little bit. You said you really liked it. There was a bit where you almost put the game down, but you were glad that you didn't. You just fucking trucked on through, and it was awesome. But then I talked to you about it again today, and you said you're not sure... If you hate it or not, what what could be <laughs> what could have happened in that space of time where you've gone from this this was really enjoyable, a little bit tedious at points, but really enjoyable. So I'm about, is the hype worn off? Uh, well, the yeah, I think era. I think it's partly due to that. I think overall it's a fucking solid stealth game, um, because it's a Metal Gear game, and obviously their mechanics are nearly always spot on. Like regardless of what you thought of MGS4, it was still a playable perfectly fun game um and i think it works in that respect but i'm on like mission 40 um i'm finding it extremely repetitive now um it's basically the same thing every mission go in get someone extract them leave or go in blow something up leave um and then yeah i thought i i thought that jump was kind of weird anyway because the other mgs games like what well one through three were like a free flowing not free flowing but a flow like a ongoing flowing story yeah instead of like being cut up into missions and i thought that that would really uh rock the the fluent storytelling you it definitely I mean? does i mean like um there's this weird thing like you um enter entering chapter two is basically where it started going downhill for me the end of chapter one going chapter, into chapter two. two yeah Oh no, sorry. So how many missions are there in a chapter? 30. Okay. I think. Yeah, I think there's 30. Okay. Um, For a minute there, I thought you were just like, so uh, like second minute mission of the game, <laughs> it's like getting shit like, whoa. No, it's just basically like, um, it, it has this weird thing where the, the plot really starts picking up towards the end of chapter one. Um, a lot of shit happens. Um, the plot is fucking dire. I don't care. Uh, can you just... Because I've not played... I'm literally completely in the dark. I've not even played any Metal Gear Solid Five, so you're going to need to... Right, so... I'll, I'll, okay, I'll, so massive spoilers, because he's just going to tell me the story now. Right, Um. so you you go to Afghanistan, obviously. Yeah. That's where you start out. Um. You're doing your thing. You're trying to stop a guy called Skullface, who's um leading the XOF unit, who are like... <laughs> have nukes and stuff i know I, i've heard about skull face yeah right yeah so basically they're like a just... they're like a terrorist group mm -hmm. um that are like Standard. an independent nation basically with mm. the ability to launch nuclear weapons almost exactly the same as what big boss is doing with um diamond dogs yeah um but yeah then it turns There's out a conflict of interest so yeah basically across the 30 mm. missions about 10 of them are story related and the other three are just kind of like filler. Like, oh, these are just private contracts. And that's one of my least favorite things about it. Because you have to basically plow through these missions that are totally irrelevant to the story. And they're, and they're samey, samey. Right? Yeah, basically. And um, so it's okay for the first half of the game. For the first 30 missions, it's acceptable. And it is fun and it's new. So you're still doing kind of new shit. And then uh, towards the end of chapter one, you basically find out that they're basically developing some parasite um that's their main weapon um they have these okay. troops called the skull troops who are infected with this parasite and do all sorts of weird shit because it's a kojima game um turns out the parasite target is target is targets human languages right so somehow what? it infects your throat and then if you speak a certain dialect it's it a babel fish. fucking kills you off uh what so it's a babel fish with a vindictive streak yeah that that bit that's really fucking stupid. so basically the whole plot is Skullface is trying to wipe out the english language um i don't know why he because he talks in english so he's a fucking hypocrite 
Uh, I don't really understand it because it's just so weird. Um, then he's got like Metal Gear, which has a nuke, and then so which you'd think is that's more of a threat, really, because um, that can eradicate a million people in a second. Yeah. yeah. And so anyway, you capture Metal Gear and you fucking just keep hold of it on your base. It's just knocking about. Um, apparently it's like not nuclear anymore, so it's disarmed. Um, but then you enter chapter two and all of this massive plot that's just picked up, you've killed off Skullface. Um, well, maybe, I don't know. I'm guessing he'd probably come back at some point. Anyway, so all of this plot has started picking up and really coming to a crescendo and shit. It starts, it kicks off chapter two. It's like, look, here's a preview of what's going to happen, like a TV series. Yeah, that's, um, that's cool. So you're that. like, yeah, this, this is cool, man. And then just as you're about to get into it, the first three missions it gives you, two of them are just replays of older missions on like an extreme mode and a subsistence mode, which is like no reflex Subsistence time. is like, yeah, literally like, like super but extreme mode. in there with nothing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then there's another mission that's just like basically do the same thing that you did before um, just to get a bit more. And then chapter two is just some dull, boring shit. And like, oh, I just it's just I can't play it for more than one mission now because the plot is so thin and just weak that it just it's interferes you... too much. It's just not yeah. gripping me. Like, Grip, gripped that's the word i was looking for and i mean like I, again i like the mechanics and i love the gameplay but just i could just go back and play the older missions with my new gear like it's 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 weird and yeah. um there's like also another stupid thing that really pissed me off i'm big boss right i'm playing big boss the fucking head of diamond dogs like i'm the ruler i'm basically the fucking king of these guys right you've got miller underneath you um and then ocelot Underneath him, he's just kind of like your right hand man, and Miller's like your commander or whatever. Mm -hmm. Fuck him. So, Quiet is this n naked sniper that we spoke about when we initially talked about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Um, booby lady. Yeah. yeah. And so she doesn't talk, but apparently you find out that she's got the parasite. Um, All and right. This okay. guy's like, oh, well, yeah, she's got the parasite. Wait a minute. And then Miller, right? So even though I've used Quiet on maybe. So like 15, 16 of the major story missions that I've done. And Basically loads of all of like, the really important ones. Yeah. yeah like, and cause I, that's just, it suits my play style. Like I like sniping and stuff. So it works for me. Um, so like I've used her a shit ton. My bond with her is at the highest it can go. And um, then like Miller just starts fucking torturing her with like, um, uh, like electrocuting her and stuff. And Standard. just, yeah, but just because it's like just to move the plot along and it just literally makes no sense because even though the guy is, uh, he might have a point with torturing her to try and get information out of her. At the end of the day, I'm the big boss and she's my right hand girl. Yeah, who I've that's used my, that's my for every bitch, single mission. <laughs> like, Don't you be fucking with my hobo. <laughs> it, would be, it would basically be like fucking say like, oh, MI5 have James Bond, right? Yeah. And they're like, all oh, right, James, you're the best fucking dude. You, you helped us on all these missions and shit. You're awesome. And then they're just like, oh, James, we heard that you dodged some tax. We're <laughs> going to fucking interrogate the shit out of you and beat you up till you're nearly dead. Yeah. I just, I just fucking clocked, right? As you were talking. Okay. So Skullface's big thing, right, right, was that, so he has this fucking Babel fish thing. I don't give a fuck. And it, so it takes away your voice, right? Yeah. And his whole point was to, like, eliminate the English language, yeah? Yeah, but he starts he... with other languages, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's cool. What the fuck is he going to do about writing? Like, you're not going to get rid of the English language. Just because we can't talk doesn't mean we won't be able to just go, hello, and just write it down. He's like, fuck. It's fucking stupid, man. That, that, I, is, I hate fucking, it. that is pretty stupid. But again, it's like, I love the gameplay. I just hate everything else about it. They've just stripped. They've just they've just butchered it, really. And like the fact that we know that now that Konami have probably stripped out an entire third chapter of the game. Yeah, that was meant to be there might explain why the plot makes no fucking sense. Yeah, because they probably had to. Because maybe like Miller torturing Quiet or whatever. Maybe they had something else in there. Maybe that was supposed to be in chapter three, and then they cut it out. And they're like, "Fuck, we have to just shove it in chapter two somewhere." Exactly. It's just weird as fuck, and we've rambled for too long. That's fine. I think I think it's fine. I mean, besides those people who turned it off when I said we're going to be doing spoilers now, which uh, I think we're out of the water off now, right? So yeah. if somehow you can feel radio waves or whatever, <laughs> like, come back. <laughs> it's cool now. We've stopped. Yeah, sweet. Um, 
let's just play the last song and then we'll let's talk just... about some other shit next week. I mean, all we've got left on this list. Right, you can look it up yourself and then we'll go into more detail on it next week. Danny DeVito was considered for Rocket Raccoon in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, that's pretty that's pretty funny. <laughs> we can talk about that. And Superman's now ugly as shit, according oh, to Frank yeah, no, Miller. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a rambler matic right That's there. a rambler one. So um, this last song's a nice shoegazy bit. It's a bit of a chill one to go out on. This yeah, is grey. By the colour of spring. Yeah. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>